They say history is written by the victors. They, whoever they are, may also now say history is rewritten by those who own their own network. That's because WWE are able and sometimes forced to edit past problematic content from not only their own shows, but also from the various other promotion libraries that they own. So even if you think you're getting the full shebang for your $9.99 a month, that is not always strictly the case, and some major matches and moments from wrestling history are now only available via other means. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 moments edited off the WWE Network. Join us. Number 10. Roddy Piper vs. Bad News Brown from WrestleMania 6 much of the content edited off the WWE Network is of the racially insensitive variety, and it doesn't get much more misguided than Roddy Piper's bizarre stunt from WrestleMania 6. In a bid to demonstrate to his opponent, Bad News Brown, that their dispute had nothing to do with skin color, the Rowdy Scott painted half of his body black. Not only did WWE scrub the entire match from the show in 2021, but they got rid of Piper's controversial pre-match promo too. I mean, it wouldn't make much sense to have a pre-match promo without the actual match, I guess, would it? So if you load up the network and put on WrestleMania 6, you go straight from Brutus Beefcake giving the genius a mid-ring haircut to Steve Allen practicing the Russian national anthem with the Bolsheviks. Haha, <laughs> the good old days. The move to excise the entire Piper Bad News bout took some fans by surprise since this was a case of going back and removing not just a moment, but a significant chunk out of a past iteration of WWE's signature event. Number 9. Vince McMahon Survivor Series N-Bomb there haven't been many WWE characters as provocative as the boss himself. Well, the old boss anyway. Boy, does that sound weird. There were few lengths Mr. McMahon wouldn't go to in order to shock, entertain, or generate heat, whether he was demanding one of his employees bark like a dog in the middle of the ring, or trying to choke the life out of his very own daughter. In a backstage segment at the 2005 Survivor Series, the genetic jackhammer crossed a line when he dropped an N-bomb while talking to WWE champion John Cena, prompting incredulous observer Booker T to audibly question if he really heard what he had just witnessed. Not only is Mr. McMahon's slur edited off the WWE Network, but the entire segment leading up to it has also been cut. Even though WWE intended the bit to be humorous rather than hateful, having the ex-chairman of a billion dollar enterprise uttering that word was deemed unsuitable and it was scrubbed as the WWE Network prepared to transition to Peacock in America. America. Watch the show now, and it uneasily transitions directly from the United States title opener to the women's championship bout. Number 8. Mickey's WrestleMania Moment Speaking of women's championship bouts, and speaking of uneasy transitions, a eh? Trish Stratus is at the center of another major moment cut from the WWE Network. Mickey James and Trish Stratus's feud was one of the most provocative WWE storylines of the day, a take on the film's single white female, which saw Mickey portray an obsessed superfan who wanted to be more than just friends with her idol. There was tremendous heat going into their title clash at WrestleMania 22, with a feverish Chicago crowd chomping at the bit to see James become the new champ. The match itself was decent, but things got a little ropey towards the end, necessitating some major edits on the WWE Network. As Trish was getting set to deliver some stratisfaction, Mickey grabbed her crotch, forcing her to put the brakes on the move. Now, the crotch grab itself is intact on the network, but WWE cut to a crowd shot during the moment Mickey James licked her fingers. WWE also opted to remove the two making a dog's dinner out of Mickey's own stratisfaction attempt, using more cutaways to clean up the match's conclusion. Number 7. The Rock Concert Volume 1 Squeaky clean uber celebrity Dwayne Johnson, or as his friends like myself call him, The Rock, has one of the most micromanaged images in Hollywood, nary putting a foot wrong when it comes to comments that he makes in public. In the wild and woolly Attitude Era, on the other hand, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment frequently levied loaded insults at his foes and seemed to approach pushing the envelope with glee. While some of his content from the era has perhaps not aged so well, it nevertheless remains intact on the network. His 2003 rock concert, however, does not.
The Great One was on fantastic form, singing songs making fun of Sacramento fans and WrestleMania opponent Steve Austin, but on the network, the musical portion is missing, and the segment quickly cuts to Stone Cold's inevitable interruption. So why did WWE choose to meddle with one of the most iconic Raw segments of all time? Well, nobody is really 100% sure, though speculation is that because The Rock is parodying the song Kansas City by Wilbur Harrison, it may just be a simple copyright issue. Number 6. Chris Benoit's Eerie Promo The use of Chris Benoit on the WWE Network has been a contentious issue since before the network was even a thing, for obvious reasons. Though almost all of the rabid Wolverine's matches and moments remain, WWE will never upload things like his Hard Knocks documentary profile from 2004, for example, and his matches never feature his actual name in the description, WWE opting instead to list his opponent or opponents competing in some variety of match type. And while it's more than fair to say that promos and interviews were never Benoit's strongest suit, one of his efforts has been omitted from the network. Prior to the Crippler's WWE title bout with Kurt Angle in the main event of the February 6, 2003 episode of SmackDown, Benoit did a sit-down interview talking about their classic encounter from the Royal Rumble a couple of weeks beforehand. The reason WWE have scrapped it is likely because he expressly mentions his wife and children during it before he's interrupted by the Olympic hero. WWE have always had to be careful with how they navigate the Benoit issue, so deleting something likely to trigger memories of that horrible tragedy was a call they had to make. Number 5. Jerry Springer's Too Hot For TV Episode 1 You remember Jerry Springer's Too Hot For TV, don't you? Of course you do! Why wouldn't you? Appointment television, if ever there was. WWE drafted in the famous chat show host to present a bit of original network content that explored moments from throughout WWE history that were deemed too hot for TV. Except, you know, not really, since the vast majority of what they showed had been broadcast on television. Perhaps they can rename it Too Hot for the WWE Network, since one of the ten episodes produced has since vanished. It's actually the show's first episode, subtitled Love Hurts, that's no longer available to view. As you may have guessed by its title, the episode looked at some notorious WWE romance storylines such as Billy and Chuck's commitment ceremony and Dawn Marie shagging Al Wilson into a premature grave. Was there any one thing that caused WWE to snuff this particular episode off the network? It's hard to say, and it's probably a case of WWE reconsidering some things in light of our more politically correct times, since a lot of the content from the episode is intact elsewhere. Number 4. Bret Hart in Stampede Wrestling There is no shortage of Bret Hart to savour on the WWE Network, with the bulk of his WWE and WCW careers documented on the streaming service. One era of the Hitman you won't be able to enjoy, however, is Bret's pre-WWE days in his father Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling territory. WWE quietly removed several documentaries featuring footage of the excellence of execution in Stampede during the summer of 2020, having previously deleted whole episodes of Stampede Wrestling from the network archives. The titles kiboshed were The Best There Is, The Best There Was and The Best There Ever Will Be, Heart and Soul, The Heart Family Anthology, Bret Hart, The Dungeon Collection, Greatest Rivalries, Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels, WWE's Top 50 Superstars and The Most Powerful Families in wrestling. While the reasons for the cuts weren't made public, a little sleuthing made it obvious that Hart's Stampede footage was the issue. While WWE owns the Stampede Wrestling Library, Bret himself actually owns his own matches from that era since he bought the rights to them from his parents before they passed away. Evidently, the Hall of Famer and WWE were unable to come to an agreement on use of the footage. Number 3. JBL's Judgment Day Promo Bradshaw's transition from beer-drinking, barroom-brawling tag team specialist to Wall Street-working xenophobic main event star was, to say the least, a little jarring. Many fans did not accept it right away, which may have played into WWE's decision to ramp up the hateful rhetoric while resorting to shock tactics like the angle where Eddie Guerrero's mother suffered a heart attack because of the tall Texan at an El Paso house show. Heading into his WWE title outing opposite Latino heat at Judgment Day 2004, JBL had heat all right, but he dared to pour fuel onto the fire with his pre-match promo. 
Prior to Guerrero's entrance, JBL got on the mic and cut a two minute long speech ragging on Hispanic people. The show was taking place in Los Angeles, which has a large Hispanic population, before claiming that he fired his Mexican housekeeper for stealing from him and offering to hire Mama Guerrero to be his new maid once she had fully recovered from her recent ordeal. It was a typically strong delivery and garnered the desired response, but you can certainly see why WWE took it off the network. Number 2. DX's Nation of Domination Parody Is there any period of WWE history as overly lionized as the Attitude Era? Yes, everyone was super over and it was exciting and the ratings were through the roof and all that good stuff, but so much of that era's content has aged about as well as that yogurt you opened three weeks ago, put back in the fridge and forgot about. And some of the worst offenders were D-Generation X. Look, I can just about tolerate WWE blabbing on about how the Green and Black group invaded WCW with a tank and definitely definitely didn't just drive close to an arena in a jeep, but some of their antics were unforgivable. Looking at it through a modern lens, WWE appear to agree, at least when it comes to DX's parody of the Nation of Domination from the July 6th 1998 episode of Raw, as it's no longer available on the network. Aside from sidekick Jason Sensation's always fantastic send-up of Owen Hart, the entire thing is an unmitigated disaster, with Triple H, Road Dogg, Billy Gunn and X-Pac donning blackface and doing deeply insulting impressions of their contemporaries. And like that old moldy yogurt, WWE felt the need to finally throw it out. Number 1. Buff Blackface if you think WWE were the only ones to utilize blackface for their primetime television show, and I haven't even mentioned the artist formerly known as Goldust vs. Flash Funk, then you would be wrong. Because anything WWE can do, WCW can do an even worse version of. I mean, they'd had plenty of practice. And who is the most insufferable person available on the WCW roster to do something immediately regrettable? Why, that would be Buff Bagwell, of course. Bagwell was certainly buff, and he did have the stuff, though the stuff on the July 19th, 1999 episode of Nitro was something to make his skin darker so that he could parody Ernest the Cat Miller. Oh, and he's also accompanied by somebody portraying Miller's manager, Sonny Ono, in what looks like a $2 Halloween mask. Great. If that didn't capture your attention, then the preceding racist promo surely would. Honestly, the whole thing is lamentable, and it's no wonder it's been cleansed from the network. It's also no wonder that Sonny Ono was one of the people who spearheaded a racial discrimination lawsuit against WCW, or that Miller ended up decking Bagwell for real before their big blow-off match at the Road Wild pay-per-view.